well. Um, and then Elder Wolf is um, excused. So for folks that are present, um, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. We do have a limited um, members of staff here, so I don't think we need to do introductions. Um, first item on the agenda is 2.1, approval of the minutes from March 10th. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from our previous meeting? Motion to approve. There's been a motion by Alderman Decker. Is there a second? Second, second by Alderperson Ackley. Second. All right. All those in favor of approving the minutes, please state aye. 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 Chair votes aye. The minutes are approved. Moving along, 3.1. Um, resolution number 189-1920, um, document number 5.5, 5, resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the Aquatic Management Services Agreement with the Wisconsin Lake and Pond Resource LLC regarding the pond and intersection of Weeding Creek Road and Menning Road. David, you want to take it? Yes, if you don't mind. Uh, this, this resolution basically authorizes the city of Sheboygan to enter into contract with Wisconsin Lake and Pond Resources, what, what this is for is for treating algae blooms in the Fox Meadow Ponds uh, in a south side re uh, residential area. We've had uh, numerous issues, and this is about the third year we're gonna be treating it. Uh, treating it uh, has been successful. And in this year, we're actually going to have some of our own staff, our city forester is certified by the DNR to actually apply this. So we're gonna save some money by purchasing and working with aquatic management services directly to help us manage this. So I'm looking for your approval. All right, is there a motion to approve 3.1? Motion to approve. There's been a motion by Alderman Decker. Is there a second? <laughs> Betty or Rose, I need one of you to second. Who was that? That was, that was me. Rose. Okay, Rose, Rose got the second. We just need you guys to identify yourself when you make the second just so we can put it in the minutes. So, okay. okay. Um, there's been a motion and a second for 3.1. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Anyone opposed? Do you have a question? Um, as a, a point of order, um, I would advise doing a roll call vote with the, the two other other persons uh, on the phone, just to make sure we've got as clear a, a record as possible. Okay. Uh, for the, uh, okay. Sounds good. So we'll do a roll call vote. So I'll call the name of the elder and then um, just state um, whether you vote um, aye or nay. So uh, elder person Decker? Aye. Uh, Ackley? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Sorensen votes aye. So with uh, all voting in the affirmative, that is approved. So 3.2, resolution number 190-1920, document 5.6, resolution authorizing the appropriate cities, city officials to enter into the fourth revision of the state and municipal transportation for design and construction of the Sidewalk gap improvements. Director Beeble? Yeah, this, this project goes back to 2016. Uh, we worked with the, the county who was managing the non-motorized transportation program and part of this program also included the sidewalk gap project that um, we were working with the county with and since this is with the DOT uh, managed project, they have a state municipal agreement these state municipal agreements go through many revisions over the years. Um, this is just revision, basically uh, changing some of the project scope and funding. However, the funding for the city does not increase. So our, our costs still remain the same from this project. Uh, just looking for your approval to um, authorize 
entering into the re re revised state municipal agreement with the Department of Transportation. Is there such motion to approve? Make a motion to approve. There's been a motion. Is there a second? This is Rose. I'll second that. Alder Person Phillips has made the second. Any further discussions on this one? Seeing none, we'll go into a roll call vote. Alder Person Decker? Aye. Alder Person Ackley? Aye. Alder Person Phillips? Aye. Uh, and Alder Person Sorensen votes aye. Um, with that, that is approved. Thank you, everybody. 3.3, .3, resolution number 191, 1920, document 5.7, resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with Northeast Asphalt Incorporated regarding tennis court reconstruction in Roosevelt Park, located at 1103 Mead Avenue. Director Buell. Yes, this uh, project was identified in our 2020 capital improvements program for park improvements. Uh, the, we went out for bids and we received the responsible low bidder, Northeast Asphalt, and it did come in slightly higher than what we originally budgeted, the 90,000. It ended up at 98,315. And um, we are going to fund that uh, extra 8,000. 315 from um, our operating budget contracted services that we have a line item within the parks department for contracted services in order to complete this. We, if you recall, we did the D-Land tennis courts. We've done the um, Volref Park. They'll be finished up this spring with the final coating once the weather gets nice. And then we'll do the cell site here with Roosevelt and in the future, in a couple more years, we'll, we'll be, we will be doing Veterans Park tennis courts as well. And that will complete pretty much our, our tennis court. Looking for you know, your approval on this. Motion to approve. There's been a motion. Is there a second? I'd like to make a motion to approve. And second by Ackley. Um, I just want to yes. speak, speak in favor of this. Uh, this is in my district, and I know that there's been a lot of constituents um, in the 8th District um, by Roosevelt Park that um, are excited about the, um, the tennis courts to be improved, um, just bringing better quality of life to the neighborhood. So thank you uh, to the DPW team for prioritizing that. With that being said, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in, uh, uh, do the roll call vote. All the person, Decker. Aye. Ackley. Aye. Phillips. Aye. And Sorensen votes aye. So that is approved. Thank you, everybody. Moving along, 3.4, resolution number 192-1920, document 5.8, resolu resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials um, to execute an agreement to management service agreement between the city of Sheboygan and EOS Recreation LLC regarding the quarry. Yes, uh, th this is the um, operating agreement that we have for uh, operating the, the quarry throughout the summer with the inflatables and that type of equipment. Um, looking at this agreement, we went just to make, to make some updates to it. And um, if I don't mind, if you don't mind, I'd like to defer to, to Thomas, if he could you know, add some uh, more background into some of the specific changes. But uh, we've had a good relationship with EOS. They, in fact, this coming summer, we're going to be adding some apparatus and some equipment to even enhance the opportunities at the quarry as we speak. So we're excited to continue this. And uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, if it's OK, if we could defer to the assistant city attorney. Sure. Um, Thomas, do you want to speak on this? Absolutely. Um, so with the upcoming Quarry Park Master Plan, there obviously will be some changes or some potential changes uh, to this facility in the future. Uh, in light of that, uh, as Director Beagle said, there's been an ongoing relationship uh, with EOS to do the management right. down there. And um, essentially, we're taking the, uh -huh. the current agreement where they manage and run um, everything down there and just extending it to the 2020 swimming season. Um, this was uh, written 
before uh, everything started to happen, so it's possible that that May 23rd date uh, in the amendment may not be uh, the appropriate date or that you know, they can still have access to it, but may not be the beginning of summer swimming season. Um, but we'll, we'll see what happens as, as time goes on. Do you have anything to add, David? Or? Uh, no, I think okay. basically our recommendation is look okay, uh, okay. Um, your approval. Th Thomas, you, you said with with, with the, the, the that date, do you, do you think that would be impacted, or you know, if, if we approve it and anything needs to change, can we revisit that, or do so you it's, think it's that's really a, impossible to say at yeah. this point what what the world's going to look like in two months? Um, I think at this point it's hard to say what the world's going to look like in three days. Um, so you know, whatever whatever restrictions would be in place on on this sort of activity are are going to come from the state, not from not from the city, almost certainly. Um, so I'm comfortable with it as written, um, okay. and sort of those those details of when when can the park actually be opened to the public, I think, will come over over time. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Alder Person Decker makes a motion. Is there a second? Second to move. That was a second by Alder Person Phillips. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll go into a roll call vote. Alder Person Decker? Aye. Alder Person Ackley? Aye. Alder Person Phillips? Aye. Alder Person Sorensen votes aye. That is approved. Thanks, everybody. 3.5, Resolution 193-1920, Document 5.9, Resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with Cluck Masonry LLC for the 2020 sidewalk program. Director Beeble. Yes, this is our annual uh, capital improvements program for sidewalk replacement and repair throughout the city. Uh, this program is... Uh, long running, uh, 40, 50 years ongoing, and uh, it's very important in order to maintain safe and accessible sidewalks throughout our community. Um, we are responsible for the sidewalks as, as a municipality, and having this program has also helped in terms of helping against claims against the city since we do have a systematic ongoing program. We identify sidewalks um, in zones and we target those zones, but we also attack areas on complaints that we can investigate and make sure that uh, we get those areas repaired as well. Uh, contract this year with Clunk is for 91,250 and, and this is in the capital improvements budget as well. So uh, we've worked with Clunk Masonry in the past, have performed well for us, and we're looking for uh, your, your approval. Right. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. All right, there's been a motion. Is there a second? Second. Rose, Rose had it. Rose? Okay, Rose had it. Um, Elder Person Phillips had the second. Um, any further discussion on the sidewalk program? Seeing none, all those, uh, Elder Person Decker. Aye. Older person Ackley? Aye. Older person Phillips? Aye. Older person Sorensen votes aye. That is approved. Thank you. Moving along. 3.6, resolution 194, 1920, um, document 5.10, resolution declaring May 3rd, 2020, World Migratory, Mig Migratory Bird Day. Director Beeple. Yes, uh, well, this is part of being designated as a bird city. We've been bird city since 2012. And uh, as, as the resolution states, uh, the importance of, of migratory birds and maintaining good habitat for nesting and for flight throughout the South America, Central America, and North America as well. And this just... Um, promotes awareness to this important topic. And again, um, this resolution is uh, necessary to remain part of the bird city de designation. So 
we are looking for your approval to um, support this and declare May 23rd, 2020, World Migratory Bird Day. Awesome. Um, motion to approve. All right. There's been a motion by Alderperson I Decker. Like a motion to approve. Uh, Alderperson Decker got it. Is there a second? <laughs> Yes, this is Betty Ackley. I'd like to make a second. Okay, Elder Person Ackley has the second. Any further discussion uh, regarding um, this item? Seeing none, we'll go into a roll call vote. All those in favor no. of approving this? Um, uh, uh, Elder Person Decker. Aye. Elder Person Ackley? Aye. Elder Person Phillips? Aye. All right, Elder Person Sorensen votes aye as well. So that is approved. Moving along, um, 3.7, resolution 195, 1920, um, document 8.1, resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with Lemahieu Tree Services for completing, for the complete removal of 80 trees and stumps associated with landscape re restoration. Director Beeble. Yes, uh, this, this service and this this was part of our 2020 capital improvement forestry management plan that we've been working towards it uh, um, as part of the emerald ash bore we've started to identify um, extra trees and areas that this would supplement our own forestry crew to continue to manage the the influx and the the acceleration of of dying ash trees within our community so this year we went out for bid, as uh, the document says, we received uh, several bids, um, one from Parms, Serenity Farms, and Lemmyhu. Uh, Lemmyhu service out of Oostburg was the low responsible, responsible bidder at 59250 and um, we're excited to get going on this and start attacking this problem. Uh, we, it would be our recommendation to uh, approve this and authorize us entering into contract with Lemahieu Tree Service for these removals. Cool. I have a question, if I could. Alder person, is that Rose, Alder person Phillips? Yes, I'm wondering are, if we consider the timing of the tree removal in relationship to uh, nesting birds. Because this is the time of year where we're going to have birds nesting in trees, so it's not ideal for removing trees. And since we're a bird city, I think that's something that we should certainly be considering. Sure. I, I think what we would do is prior to any, any tree being removed, we, we do an inspection. Our forester would meet with, with the, the tree contractor assure that yes if there's any active nests for instance i think that clearly we would move on and wait um again um that that would be a that would be contrary to what we just approved prior to of the world the world migratory bird uh resolution so yes that i think i would have to say we would definitely be aware of that and we would monitor that and definitely would take care and uh we have plenty of other trees if there is an active nest that we could shift the focus to a different tree that doesn't have that activity. Could that be added to the resolution? I don't know if you'd have to add it to the resolution, but if you want to, you, you want to just, if you want to um, have that as kind of the, our understanding, Rose, and that the department will, you know, make sure that we have that understanding that we will be working at those nests prior to any tree removal. Okay, thank you. Any follow-up questions, Rose? Sorry? I said, did you have any follow-up questions? Are you good? No, not this time. Okay, sounds good. Any further questions from other committee members? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve? She wanna, she can make the motion. I just make the motion to approve. Mm -hmm. You can make the motion. I'll just make. Uh, motion to approve. Uh, Alder Person Decker has made a motion. Is there a second? Is there a second? 
Older yeah, this is Elder Person Ackley. I'll make a second. Okay, Elder Person Ackley's made the second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll go into a roll call vote. Elder Person Decker, how do you vote? Aye. Elder Person Ackley? Aye. Elder Person Phillips? Aye. Elder Person Sorensen votes in the affirmative as well. Um, with that, that is approved. Thank you. All right, um, moving along. Uh, 3.8 presentation regarding the transportation infrastructure management plan. Um, this item is for discussion only. And I'll turn it over to Director Beeble. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'd like to just give an update uh, on our transportation infrastructure pavements uh, street network. Uh, around 2015, I made this presentation to the council in, in regard to our deteriorating street network uh, where we've been, where, where we were at 2015, and the need to really reinvest and focus on our street network in terms of repairs and managing the overall pavement condition. So what I'm gonna do is kind of give you some slides here, explain some things. There's some history, how we got here, where it headed to, and basically, what have we done since 2015? It's about five years. I did a, an update of this in 2017, and uh, it's timely since we're moving into now 2020 and beyond, and we have some more capital improvements requests coming for the next five-year program. So with that, I, I, I usually start with this slide, and it, it, this really talks about the cost of timely maintenance on our pavements. And if you're in that green section, and what that really is saying is if, you, if we're able to do maintenance on our streets while they're good to very good, at a lower cost dollar, we're able to extend the life at a much lower cost versus if we allow our pavement condition to drop below good into the fair to poor, then it becomes very expensive to, to, to maintain. And, and, and you'll see that later in the presentation, uh, the, the, the cost of reconstruction versus our asphalt resurfacing program. So starting in 07, I use this as our base year. 6.6 .6 was our average rating on a scale of one poor, 10 good, 6.6 .6 was our, pretty much our highest rating that we have on record. We, we rate the pavements every two years, and that's by state statute, and the DOT requires this. So uh, as you'll see, in the beginning, the years, it really doesn't change much. It dropped down in, in 09 to about 6.35. That was our rating in 11. Again, 6.3, everything's fine, right? You know, it's not changing much. We're not doing much work, everything's good. All of a sudden, 2013, even a little, little bit shift, but you can see how that, that curve, the mountain is shifting to the left towards the poorer rating. 6.25 in 2013, and then there's a dramatic shift. That's where that curve is. We talked about timing the maintenance. And during these years, 2013, 2011, there wasn't a lot of focus, a lot of, little bit leaner budget years. Let's hold off, let's not, let's not invest in our street network. All of a sudden, we're below six and we're at 5.9. That was the year I came out and I said, hey, this cannot continue. That curve has shifted left and it's gonna be very, very costly to the city of Sheboygan to get back to where we wanna be. 2017, two years later, we made, after that presentation, council and the leadership of the city made some investments. And they said, we agree, we got we to gotta continue this. We got, it above, we got it back above six, just barely, 6.01. In 2019, we got it to 6.25. So 
under the council leadership and the leadership of the city administrator and the mayor, we've really put a focus on street infrastructure, street repairs. And it's evident by that rating. So again, it was at 5.9. We've, we've, by 2019, we got it to 6.25. This is just another way of showing uh, that data. It's more of this is the hard data. But I like, I like, to, I like to show, you know, back in 07, the failed, the failed pavements were only 4.6%. I just want you to think about that. In 2013, I, I skipped a couple of years, but it, it's now up to 6.5%. Again, 2015, the year that we really decided, hey, we really have to do something, it jumped to 14% of our network was failed. Hmm. It's streets rated a 1, 2, or 3. And the, the lower number is not a good number in this case. So 2019, we were able to get that number down by a, around roughly 4% to 10.7. We really attacked that, and you, you'll see there if in the excellent range, we really made a big difference with our streets in our, in our repairs. Again, back to this, this slide, I like, I, and this is an important slide about that timely maintenance we, we attack the pavements, we do the work on our, on our better streets, and I know it's a little counterintuitive, you know, why aren't you fixing that bad street? Well, sometimes you, if, you, if you time your maintenance and you fix a street that's not quite as bad, you extend the life and it's, it's much more cost effective. This, this slide really helps uh, explain where we've come from 2007 to our worst year, 2015, to where we've come already in the, in the roughly four years, 2015 through 2019. You can see, again, in 17, we only had 4.6. Then it was up to 14. Now it's down to 10, 10.7. So we had a 23.5% reduction, reduction in our failed pavements in that, in that four-year time frame. Same thing with our fair streets. You know, we were at 44% of the network. We're really, really pretty much right where we need to be again. But from 07 to 19, that was a reduction from 15 to 19 of almost roughly 9% of our network. Where we really made some great chain uh, strides was our excellent streets. In, in 2007, we were only at about 20%. In 19, we were at 24%. So, and again, in, in 15, we were, we were down to 17% of our entire street network was considered excellent. Now it's a quarter, almost a quarter of our whole city street network is considered excellent. That's a 38.6% increase from 15 to 19. Again, our good network, this is where we can really make up now, is now that we've, we've made the investment, if we get to the good, Good was 31%. In 2015, it was 20. And we're a little bit almost to 21%, about a 4.5% four, four increase in, in our overall good, good streets. So we're making a difference. It's coming along. Again, these are some of the strategies that we, we employ on, on our network on a daily basis during the construction season. This is one of the most cost-effective and least costly is crack filling. Mm -hmm. Let's get those cracks filled so water doesn't penetrate into the street, into the subgrade, and cause failure, especially during this time of the season. We have thawing during the day. Water penetrates cracks. Evening, it freezes, expands, and ends up popping either concrete or blacktop. From. But that's roughly about $5.50 a foot is what it costs to crack fill. Remove, replace, cut, uh, curb and gutter. In 15, the price was you know, $48 a foot. In 2020 now, we're looking at $62 a foot. So I just, I, the reason I put those two on there is when, we, when I made this presentation originally in 2015, I had those costs 
to, to demonstrate, you know, this is what it costs and this is where the money goes. And what you'll see is, you know, with time and inflation, costs go up or, over, over, the, over, the, over time. Concrete panel replacement. We, we, we base this cost on a square yard of concrete. In 15, it was $105. In 2020, 115 New asphalt over concrete. This is with our city crew. And this is, that's a picture of our, our, our paver that we purchased. And uh, this is uh, our crew working on the streets. When we do, a, when, we do when, I, when I say, <clears throat> excuse me, $30 a foot, that's just right down the center line. We're going right down the middle of the street. So it costs us roughly $30 a foot back in 2015. In 2020, costs are around $35. That's fairly inexpensive. That's just material only, and we purchase our material from the Sheboygan County Highway Department. When we do new asphalt over concrete and we contract that out, it's around roughly, it was $52.50 a foot in 2015. Now it's up to about $71.50 per foot. That's hiring like a Northeast asphalt or a contractor to come in and just pave. So we're, we're, we're cost effective with our city crews, but in a lot of cases, there's some streets and some of the, and some of the asphalt mixes that the county is unable to provide to us that we do have to still contract. This is mill and fill. So I got two, two, two categories here. The mill and fill uh, asphalt where we mill a street with a contractor and then fill it as well. That could be $75 a foot. It was in 2015, now it's up to $90 a foot. If we do mill and fill, where we, we, we don't own a mill and neither does the county, so we contract the milling of the old asphalt. But we can still, if we do that, we can have our city crews do the work. When we do that, it, in 2015 it was $42 a foot, and in 2020 we're looking at roughly $50 a foot. This is where it gets real costly. This is where we let our pavements go below that good category. This is where we have to actually totally reconstruct. We did North Avenue last year. We're going to do Superior Avenue hopefully this year. Back in 2015, it was $225 a foot. By 2020, it's $100 more to $325 a foot. So these next slides, they may be hard to read on the screen, but I know you, all, you should all have paper. This is basically showing our next five years uh, for capital improvements, what we're, what we're projecting. But I want to show you basically is we, we're roughly right around two and a half million in borrowed funds. The county sales tax provides $450 annually. We do also have our... our, our the uh, wheel tax that the city has, as well as a portion of the garbage fee. And you'll see that coming up. But I want you know, we, we have streets, we have a mixture of neighborhood streets as well as what I would say collectors over the next five years. And it's roughly anywhere from three million to four million annually is what we're looking at to invest. In 2023, where we had actually five and a half million of street. So it went back, in, back when this presentation was given in, in the last update in 2017, there were some assumptions. You know, annually it was going to be roughly around $4 million dedicated to streets. Overall, over the life of the project, it was like $62 million is what we were looking at. Well, by 17 and, and looking at it, the assumptions made this, this was not sustainable. So we've adjusted, and, that, and that's what you see in this slide in 2020. And it's still close to $4 million. It's a little bit less, and some of it is depending upon the, the mixture of what we're getting for funding sources. But it's, it's a little reduced. It's now down to $55 million. 
for the total for the total funding cycle of of this of this project. You know, wheel tax, as I mentioned, we have we have a property tax levy that we in contribute. There's some special assessments. Those are going down because right now we have a special assess assessment fund that is creating revenue from older projects that are we're receiving payments for, but we no longer specially assess for projects. So that will eventually fade away. And as you can see, by 2030, it's down to about 25,000. And that's roughly from probably the sidewalk program is really all we're assessing for. County sales tax is still in there, as well as borrowing. And borrowing, we, we've reduced in this last slide. It's down, roughly down to 2 million a year is what we're receiving from the Capital Improvements Borrowing Fund. When this was first projected, we were going to be over three, roughly three million a year for borrowing. Looking at where our budget and how we're going to pay for that and how it adds to the debt levy, the debt load for the, for the city, we adjusted it and now we've reduced that, 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 that figure for, for, the, for the project. So where, where, does, that, where does that leave us? As you saw on those slides, costs are going higher, but we have less money to spend on roads. So what are we going to do? So this is where what this, this slide shows our miles of streets resurfaced. And we had some really, really good years in 16 and 17, or in, in 17 and 18 especially, six miles and seven miles. You look at... Um, you look at 2019 and 2020, we really, the, the chart has really de decreased significantly in terms of miles, but the cost was high. And the cost was high is because we replaced a bridge, Penn Avenue Bridge, and we did North Avenue. North Avenue was four and a half, almost $5 million alone for that project. This year we're doing Superior Avenue. Superior Avenue is roughly three, two and a half to three million. So that's why these last two years, it, it, it shows very little. But again, and then 2021, we're back up to 3.6, 3.3. 3. 2023, we had a, a reconstruct project in there. That's why it's low again. Uh, that might be shifted. These, these numbers, these are planned. And with, this is only what we identify in our capital improvement program. So if you recall, our city paver, and our city streets that we're able to do, that comes out of our operating budget, on, out of our annual allocation for our crews and our operations. Those miles aren't in here. They were recorded in 2017 and 2018. So even though it shows like 3.6 or 3.5, 3.2, I, I would expect when we add our city paved streets, we should be into the 4 and 5 mile a year and that's that's a good target from where we've been to where we need to go and that should be within that range of what I had for budget and costs so at that four to five miles of streets per year I'm anticipating that pavement rating to continually incrementally rise uh, I'll finish on the last slide that pavement condition so what happens is that excellent rating that we've really made a big impact will still be, when we do, new, when we do streets and we re reconstruct them or resurface them, they're going to be in that excellent category. The excellent streets today, they're going to, they're going to age. They're going to deteriorate somewhat. But they're not going to go from excellent to fair. They're going to go to excellent to good. So our good number will increase. Again, reducing the failed and fair, ultimately, the bottom line is, is, is we're, we're going to move closer to that 6.6 .6 figure that we had in 2007. We're making great progress. I think what this, this update demonstrates is a couple of things. Um, clearly, we cannot ignore and just say everything's fine, let's reduce this area, let's, not, let's save some money, look in our streets, look pretty good, let's not, let's not spend money, we'll be fine. 
when we kick that process down the road, in other words, um, we pay the price. And it's very expensive as that demonstration of timing that maintenance has, has demonstrated. It also shows that when we invest and we put the effort into it and we do the work and we do the, do the maintenance that's required, it is making a difference. And our pavements have improved and they are improving to this day. So I'm going to end it with that, with thanking you in terms of you understanding and listening that this is important. It's important to our community. It's one of the number one things that we get back on our citywide uh, survey, community-wide survey in terms of how we are performing. City streets is probably the number one thing we hear. And uh, we understand that. We need to continue this process and... Uh, Again, I'd entertain any questions that you have, but I just wanted to give you an update uh, because we have spent a lot of money and we, you know, it has made a difference. And I think it's starting to show in our community. Mr. Kabibel, uh, do any other others have questions? I know I have some. Um, Alder Person Decker, do you want to go first? Well, unless somebody on the phone wants to, maybe it'd be easier for them or do they have any questions? Betty Rose, you guys still there? Yeah, still here. No questions. Okay. Dean, you want to go? Okay. okay. Good. Um, the one question, one of the first questions, how come we don't include the, the, our numbers on there? I, I think for, for for the public's view, I would, I would prefer to see those numbers on there because people see that low number and then they kind of go, you're not doing as much. Are you talking about in terms of like the, the planning mileage? Well, the, the numbers where he showed it on the on the screen for you know for what we're what we have done like last year and things yeah. like that. <clears throat> it, it's it's a little hard to. I mean, I I, I could estimate, mm -hmm. and I maybe I, sh I I I could do that. But it, what we do is we adjust. We kind of wait and see. Like right now, we have streets that we've identified that we want to attack, but. It's very dynamic. Uh, things come up, all of a sudden there's something else that needs to be repaired, and then we'll, we jump on that. We, we adjust accordingly and we'll say, hey, while we're in this area doing some utility work, mm -hmm. the gas company was in this area or the water utility, we're gonna come in and pave behind them and extend. So I, I, I'm a little leery of promising, forecasting, even though we're gonna do it, it's just, yeah. I, I don't have the actual streets identified. That's that's the little difficulty that I that we have. Um, but I think we know what the budget figure is, and I think what I could do is I could adjust that um, this week talk and say on average, and I can maybe have have a range. This is where we project to be based on our budget, and I think that's fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess the other one that I was looking at, well, like even like what you did last year, was that included? That, that was you said that that wasn't included on this. She, she, yeah, uh, it, yeah, yeah, and that I would like to see that on there, just because uh, that's one of the. I, I I agree with you. That's the one thing that residents um, have the most, probably the most to say about of, of anything and uh, anything I've ever talked about. Um, even with the garbage program now, I mean, people still. Streets, streets, streets. So, yes. I mean, I applaud you on, on on this program. I think this is a great. You know, I I, I see the steps going forward. I see it getting better. I I I, uh, I I agree with this program. So, I guess that's all I can, I have to say. Awesome, cool. Thanks, Dean. I, I do got some questions, David. If that's okay. So, I, I guess yeah, um, my first question is in terms of um, that the the graph that you showed, the second to the last one, in regards to mileage of streets resurfaced. I think of like. I, I get what you said to, to Alder Person Decker's comments in terms of, you know, things do kind of change and ebb and flow, and you, you want to be strategic and smart about, you know, how you're prior, prioritizing the roads and how we're um, repairing them. It, it's the biggest issue out there, I feel like, in the city um, right now besides, um, you know, obviously the coronavirus pandemic. But is, is there some way that you can kind of incorporate it in terms of planning and just ed educating the general public, maybe not necessarily saying like we're going to fix this specific road, but in terms of like, you know, two years from now we'll fix this road that has a pacer uh, number of three or four, and just sort of pool pool those roads together. I mean, I was looking at um, one of the numbers on the list. I think it was like um, 
it's Lakeshore Drive from Wilson Avenue down to the railroad tracks. I mean, yep. that's really rough right now. Yes. Um, and I just imagine 2023 when that's planned to get repaired. I mean, three years, that's really going to look rough if we ignore it. So obviously we'll do some, you know, um, pothole filling and, and, and some work on, and in terms of like that to make sure that we're maintaining it and um, have the longevity of it. But, you know, just looking at, at the trends of this, you know, it looks like we're making progress and then, you know, it looks just like the stock market the last few days where it's just sort of tanking. And I think right. a lot of general public like, oh, my God, what are you doing? So just in terms of how we communicate um, with, with our citizens and individuals, making sure that that's important. For that too. I, yeah. don't, I don't know if that was a question, but if, if you want to explain. But it's, explain, a, good, it's, a, it's, it's yeah. a good comment. In, in the, I, I don't have it in the slide, but I believe you had it as an emailed attachment was the map of roads that we've completed. Yeah, I, I saw that. As well as roads planned. And uh, that, that's telling, because then that gives you a visual when you look at the overall city and, it, and you see the number of streets that have been completed and what's being planned in the future. Again, I'm a little hesitant to put on what we do with our city crews, because again, even right now, we, we had some streets identified this year that uh, with the pandemic happening, we were going to do, for instance, Salmon Avenue or in Superior as well. We're holding off on some of these and, and maybe shifting priorities again. But I, but I do welcome your comment that I think yeah. what we can do is at least have a range in there of what we typically do that we can anticipate. It's not going to say, you know, this is the street where the city crews are going to be doing and we're going to be getting into your neighborhood and doing this. But it, it, it is a range that I think we're comfortable with showing that the city crews do typically one to three miles of paving on an annual basis. And this is where we anticipate these planned years, ultimate miles of improvement. Yeah. And I think, I think that's, that's a good suggestion. And we can update that chart. Yeah, definitely. And I think just, it just helps us alders and uh, I would agree with, with, with uh, our constituents. Um, not a criticism at all towards you, but I mean, it, it's, 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 it is shocking looking at the price jump, um, you know, of how much um, it costs just to repair a road within, you know, five years. Yeah. You know, I'm just imagining what, what the next five year looks like and then, you yeah. know, the 10 years yeah. down the road. And, it, I mean, I don't envy you and your job, um, you know, and making sure, you know, planning and figuring out how, how we can r repair roads in a cost effective way. And I believe that we have a great team that's, um, that, that's doing that. Um, do, and, and how, how do we? Th I guess my question is, how do we think the costs are going to um, impact planning and construction in the future? I mean, is it still going to kind of? It's it's still it's it's still trending upward. Yeah. And I think what that's why I, I think another, I think what, we're, focus, what you're seeing yeah. is we are focusing more with our city crews. Mm -hmm. So I think what's going to where we're, we're headed in, into because we're cost effective that our labor at the city is kind of a sunk cost. It's there. Yep. It's If they're not repairing roads, they're repairing sewers. They're repairing something else. So we know right now the, the, the focus is on the roads. So we've invested in the paver. We've in invested in resources in terms of maximizing that. So I think what we're doing is in, instead of maybe going out and contracting a large, a large number of roads, we're going to look to maybe do contracting the milling of it and having our city crews pave. Uh, we're finding that to be more cost effective because with us buying the asphalt from the, as, from the county, it's much more um, cost effective. So we're getting more miles of streets paved at a lower cost versus contracting. And ultimately, we want to sustain the number of miles yeah. that we can do. And I think that's how we're going to attack this. I think you're going to see some some changes within the capital improvements program in the next five years to enhance those efforts within our city crews. Totally. And I appreciate that. And I think right now you have a, a very supportive council um, that really does want to prioritize road repairs. We hear it and you guys hear it. Um, and I think I can speak, speak on behalf of the committee yes. and those on the phone. Yeah. You know, we appreciate the work that you guys are doing and, you know, tackling this big, big issue head on. So thanks, Director. Pre appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Moving ahead. Um, 4.1. Um, this is in regards to making spirits bright. Re um, report of the committee number 184-1920. Um, 
resolution number 106, 1920 by older persons Wolf and Sorensen authorizing entering into agreement with Making Spirits Bright um, for the use of Evergreen Park for the Quarry View Center for the annual Making Spirits Bright drive through holiday lights display, recommending adopting the resolution um, as amended. The director, do you just want to speak on this real quick and what we're doing or? Okay, um, so uh, we're gonna yeah, file I, this. I know that there's still. Um, my understanding is we're gonna fi got to file this because Making Spirits Bright is still working with the, the other group okay. and they'll be coming probably back with a new document probably to the new council and new public works committee after the election. Sounds good. Is there a motion to file? Motion to file. Is there a second? A second Okay, Betty Ackley got that for the second. All those in favor of filing this motion, please say aye. Or, oh, we've got to do the roll call vote. Oh. Always forget that. Um, Alderperson Decker. Aye. Alderperson Ackley. Aye. Alderperson Phillips? Aye. Alderperson Sorensen votes aye. In the opinion of the chairs, the ayes have it. That is approved. All right, next uh, regular meeting will be April 14th, uh, 2020. I'm assuming we'll probably be here. We'll do again. what we did with this and we'll have an accessible by call as well. Um, seeing that we've exhausted the agenda, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion to adjourn. There's been a motion. Is there a second? Second. This is Rose. All right. Rose got the second for adjournment. All those in favor of adjourning, please state aye. It's an adjournment. Aye. Aye. All aye. The, aye. Right. We are adjourned at 622. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>